Again, Greg Bell of the News Tribune, Lumen Field in Seattle. What we learned tonight, beside it was ugly, Seahawks lose 30 to three in preseason game number two, the Seahawks reserves lose 30 to three. The first thing we learned is what we all already knew, how important Russell Wilson is to this team starting real games. You just saw a quarterback play you just don't see in Seattle. Alex Magoo throwing the ball straight to Denver safety. Justin Simmons was just standing on the sidelines on a third down play, on a scramble play. It was as if Magoo never saw him. He was four yards in front of Cody Thompson, his intended receiver, in his own territory in the first quarter. That set up Denver's first touchdown. And then Magoo threw a screen pass while he was backpedaling, and four Broncos were chasing him, and he threw it straight to a defensive tackle. Pete Kill said those are both bad plays. The first play, he just has to throw the ball away, and the second one, you just don't throw a screen pass in that much traffic straight to a defensive lineman. And then Magoo got a sack, a 20-yard sack, and lost a fumble on another third down right after he got his only rhythm of the offense, really the, the first two games up to that point. Got into Denver territory, fumbles on third down, loses the fumble on a sack fumble. Three turnovers in the first half, and it was 17-0. It wasn't even that close. We also learned a new way that Alex Magoo, by the way, if he's playing any regular season games, let's face it, Seattle's season is down the tubes. Russell Wilson still has not missed a regular season or any game of importance in his NFL career. The other thing we learned tonight is, again, how Pete Carroll is, adjust, is approaching this preseason, unlike any of his previous 11 with the Seahawks. He is using the three preseason games, one fewer than normal, and he's using the starters in that game only. He said after tonight's game that those who haven't played, which is about two dozen players, most of them starters, like Wilson, will play next Saturday night here against the Chargers in the third and final preseason game. Carroll said it's been, quote, enticing that the NFL has set it up this way, one fewer preseason game with an extra week off between that final preseason game and the regular season opener. The Seahawks have 15 days between Saturday's game against the Chargers and the opener in Indianapolis September 12th. Carroll said he's been using that plan all along to play the starters in the third and final game, only in that game, because he was hoping that guys would, quote, come back, meaning from injury, meaning specifically Jamarco Jones and or Cedric Obwehi, the veteran tackles who they were going to have play while Dwayne Brown continues his hold in. But then Jones and Obwehi have been injured for the last three weeks. That's why Stone Forsyth has started at left tackle the last two preseason games. And that is why Russell Wilson has been nowhere near starting or playing not with a rookie sixth-round pick as your left tackle against starting defensive linemen. Last week it was Cleveland Farrell, the former first-round pick of the Raiders, who had his way with Forsyth. Tonight, Denver started most of their veterans like they did last week as well. So Carroll is doing it differently with a different schedule, and he's loading them all up next week so they'll have 15 days off between them. So expect Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner, Jamal Adams, Chris Carson maybe even, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and what's left of the starting offensive line to play next week. Dwayne Brown's contract situation does not look like it's going to end this week. Though again, I expect he will be on the field not missing game checks for the opener against the Colts. What else do we learn tonight? DJ Dallas has been the star of this preseason and he's not doing it just as a running back that he's listed as. He is now making a bid to be the kickoff returner. Tonight he had a 49 yard kickoff, 45 yard kickoff return to the 49 yard line of Denver. And he also had another long kickoff return out past the Seahawks 30 yard line on the only two kicks of the first half by the Broncos that actually were not touchbacks. Last week it was last year it was Freddie Swain, primarily by the end of the season as the kickoff returner. They had others do it, but they really wanted Swain to do it by the end of the season. And it looked like coming into this season it would be Swain's job. But so far, DJ Dallas is making a strong push. Carroll after the game said, we are impressed with everything he's doing, including on special teams. He even blocked a punt, bursting up through the middle and getting through the up back for the Broncos in the second half. TJ Dallas said he's never done that before. He said he's having a blast, had a great off season. He's having so much more fun than he did during his rookie season when guys tend to get overwhelmed and, and swimming, head swimming a little bit. He said he's having a blast wearing the most famous, one of the most famous numbers in team history. Of course, number 31 was Cam Chancellor. Don't go too crazy about the results because 50 to 10 in the first two weeks would drive you nuts if you're a fan. Keep in mind, Russell Wilson hasn't played 
24 players haven't played, most of those starters, and they have played a lot of opposing starters. Tonight, Denver had their starting offense in for most of the first half because they're trying to settle who their starting quarterback's going to be for the season. Looked like Teddy Bridgewater to me. He was 9 of 11, moved the offense really well better than Drew Locke. Uh, the fact that Seahawks defense really only got any traction against the Broncos when Locke came in late in the second quarter. Two big injuries you saw John Ursua get carted off in the second quarter with what Carroll said is a serious knee injury. Ben Burkirvan got carted off the same motorized cart on the opening kickoff that was a touchback. I mean, an awful, as Nick Lord, the special teams captain, put it, an awful injury, especially to be on a touchback when there wasn't any return or blocking or tackling going on. Carroll said both of them are going to be out a long time. They both, Ursua and Burkirvan, sound like candidates for injured reserve to start the season. So whether K.J. Wright, you ask? Well, K.J. Wright, I don't think, will re-sign with Seattle to be a backup to Bobby Wagner at middle linebacker, which is what Ben Burkirvan is, and on special teams, which is what Ben Burkirvan has been since the Seahawks drafted him out of UW. So I wouldn't necessarily say just because there's a linebacker injury, Seahawks will go sign K.J. Wright. I don't see Wright filling the role of Ben Burkirvan for 2021. All that and more is at thenewstribune.com, on Twitter at GBellSeattle. Thanks for watching.